Um, is he supposed to be doing a review right now? Scotty? Um, hold on, I gotta find him. Hold on. Scotty? There you go. Scotty? Why is the window open? Hold on, what? Wait, this window is open. Hold on. Apologies, but it appears that after watching the I grab it. G give me a it appears that after watching this movie, Scotty has jumped out the fucking window. Um I don't know I don't I didn't watch this with him, so I don't know what happened. I know she crying, that's all I know. I don't... I don't know what to do! Go to the review now. Hello? You're not talking anymore. You're just giving me that weird look like you want to punch like you want to punch me in the oh You are lucky I am a fucking vampire. Go do your review. Midsommar. That's how I pronounce it. Oh boy. Well, it's true what they say, you know, you rewatch a movie, you get more out of it. And I think watching it this time, I think now I'm able to talk about it. So the story is here after an incident with her family. Danny goes with her friends to this retreat in Sweden where they, it's basically like a cult or some kind of religion and where she, where she and her friends find out that there's something weird going on and they have weird traditions and soon they start, you know, disappearing or getting killed one by one, disappearing one by one and there's some sinister stuff going on. Now, the one thing I'm going to say majorly is spoilers. And... Here's the thing. You're probably going to figure this out by watching this. And it's very obvious from the very beginning. They are invited to this place by a friend of theirs. So if you have a brain, you can figure out that everything that goes on from this point, from them getting there, their friend is in on it. And they treat it at the end of this movie, like, it's a big twist that their friend was in it the whole time. And I'm, I, I didn't catch this the first time. I was sitting there, I'm like, oh, he's in on it. Okay. But this time I'm watching it, and I'm like, he's in on it. Or, no. I was sitting there, and as soon as they get there and everything starts going on, and so, oh, your brother, whatever his name is, brought you with him. I'm like, oh, 
okay, so he was in on it from the beginning. Why did I think that was such a good twist the first time? It's very obvious that he's in on it. He has to be. I mean, they make you play like he doesn't know what's going on, but he knows what's going on. He's in on it. Uh, and another thing that bugs me. Okay, so Danny has gone through a family tragedy. At the beginning of this film, her sister has gone off the deep end and killed herself and their parents by using um, carbon monoxide uh, uh, egg uh, exhaust fumes from a car, which can somehow be fumed through the entire house. I guess you gotta block everything off, right? I don't know. But it can be done, I guess. And that's how she loses her parents and her sister. Her sister commits murder-suicide. And yeah, and that's what kind of pushes her to, to move forward. And while it's not said in so many words, but... I want to believe because we don't actually see the act. We see that they're asleep. And we know that the parents were drugged so they couldn't move. And that will leads me because something similar happens to her boyfriend Christian towards the end of this. And it leads me to believe that they hadn't picked Danny, this cult, to be with them. Because they even say she has no family, no connections, other than Christian and the friends that were brought with her. And then once they're all dead, except for Christian, towards the end, there's nothing holding her back. And so I'm one to believe that this whole thing was orchestrated to get her there. Like, they went through and they picked her. Like, that's her. We want her. Bring her with. And so they killed up. They made it look like her sister committed the murder-suicide. Or maybe her sister was secretly part of this thing. I don't know. Because it seems like, you know, who knows. <clears throat> but, yeah. I actually found a way to connect this to um, Hereditary, in a way. Is that, um... Well, they could have done is that they could have connected this little cult group. That this movie was having at the same time as Hereditary, and not to spoil Hereditary or anything, but that she finds out about what happened in Hereditary. Like, maybe... Here, oh, oh, same thing as... Okay, here. She finds out that the whole... I'll, I'll tell you one thing about Hereditary, Hereditary. The whole thing kicks off after the grandmother passes away. So here's what you do to connect it to Hereditary. Instead of the phone call being about the sister committing murder-suicide to the, her and parents, you have it, a phone call, and you don't really know who's on the other side, just say it's her mom, say that the grandmother died, but instead of, you know, embracing her feelings and going to the funeral, she takes off with friends to the ceremony, and you find out that the ceremony is connected to that, and that what's going on with her family in America is connected to what's going on at this place. And they all worship the same, you know, pagan god or whatever. But I don't know. It's just an idea that you could have connected the same director, Ari Aster. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, back to the actual film, what happens here. So, one thing that uh, really got me this time is, from the moment they get to this place, Danny has... That look on her face. Maybe not like that, but it's... And it, you'll see in the thumbnail I use. Like, you have that when she first gets there. But then eventually, just the only look she has on her face throughout the entire film is... That's it. And I feel bad for her boyfriend, Christian. He's trying to do this project on... He, he's trying to do this project on this place... So he, he can get his, like, it's like a college thing. Whatever he can get, and like, you know, do the thing. And she should understand that. But she seems to make it all about her on this trip. Where from the get-go, she knew he was going there to get information. I mean, their friend was doing this. And then he, 
he was going to do a project and he needed to figure out what he was going to do. But she could tell from the beginning that, you know, she should be able to tell that he was probably going to end up doing something there. And it's like everything he tries to do while he's there is not as important as what she wants to do or her needs. Like, there's a point where she walks up to him and he starts ask, asking the people questions. It's about incest, which is a decent question, seeing as most people that live in that in that place are related. And they do say that cousins are permitted to, but that's about it. And they do bring outsiders in from time to time so that they can do it. But after he answers the question, she gets this look on her face like, every time he speaks, after they're there for a while, every time he speaks, she gives him this look like it's the worst thing in the world he's ever said. It's like he'll say something like, so uh, what about the incest here? Did, you know, do they dabble in incest? And she just has this look on his face like it's the worst thing that he's ever said. Now, from the get-go, these people are drugged. They are. They're giving these shrooms. And I'm sorry, but if I get there and I'm handed this thing and told that it's shrooms, who knows what the fuck that is? I'm not taking it. She even doesn't take it right away. Then eventually does. And I'm sorry. But I'm not. But I'm not taking that stuff. And even I'm feeling more... Okay, the whole situation that goes down with Christian, I'm on his side about. I'm on his side because from the moment... He has stepped foot. They have chosen him for something. And I'll get to that. And that's kind of the reason why I didn't want to rewatch this. Because that whole part. But he's chosen for something the minute he gets there. And from that moment, he is drugged constantly. And it is shown. When they have this big dinner, his drink is a different color than the rest of the drinks on there. He gets a pie that has pubic hairs in it. Pubic hairs of a girl who has just become to the right age to lose her virginity. They even say that. And they talk to him about it and they say, oh, she's got the whatever it's called. And that means she has a right to be able to have sex with people. And they've chosen him to be the one to for her to lose her virginity to. And from this moment, he is constantly be giving these drinks stuff to take. And there is... A sequence where um, Danny is crowned the May Queen, which it was probably set up. Now, before I get... This is getting towards the climax. So I'm going to go back a little bit. They bring along their friends, right? And there's this ritual where this woman just jumps off a cliff, basically, and kills herself. And one of the guys that they didn't come up with someone else brought starts freaking out. Like, no, no, no. This is fucked up. This is fucked. This is fucked. We're out of here. We're out of here. And then this guy disappears, leaving the girl looking for where she wa where he is, and then she disappears. And they make an excuse like, oh, uh, the boyfriend went to the train station, and then I drove her to the station to meet him. And then uh, the, uh, the African-American friend of theirs it, who's also doing this, he is sneakily going around because um, th there's a petty argument between him and Christian about how um, he was doing this first and then Christian decided he wanted to do it. And then he gets all pissed. like, no, you knew I wanted to do this. Why are you doing it too? You're just doing this so you can get the grade before I can. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares about it? But he gets caught sneaking into a place and is murdered. Here's the thing. There's a character played by Will Poulter. If you've seen Where the Millers, you know what I'm talking about. There's a character played by him, and he goes to take a piss, and he pisses on his tree. And the people start freaking out because he's pissing on his tree. Now, I'm standing up for him, because he had no fucking idea that this was sacred. They told them nothing. When they got there, they pointed out the yellow tent as being sacred, and the stuff that the, the African-American guy was looking at was sacred. They said nothing about this tree. They mentioned nothing to him. And they mentioned nothing to no one. And all of a sudden, he's pissing on this fallen down tree. And it, it, it's supposedly, it's sacred. And then he disappears. And then when the African-American guy is killed, the guy is wearing his skin. Now, I don't know who's in charge 
of the gore. The deaths are off screen. Mostly. But there's a part of the end where they show the dead bodies they got them all decorated and stuff. And it's incredibly fake. It's incredibly fake. They're supposed to be dead bodies decorated with stuff. But they look like paper mache dolls. They do. They look terrible. Now we're getting into what... Now we're getting into the the climax. And you're going to see why I keep calling it climax over... Uh, <clears throat> third act. So, like I said, Christian is constantly being drugged. He's being forced you know, to take the drink, the stuff, and he's being set up to do this. So they take Danny away for some ceremony. And then they drag Christian into this tent where there's a bunch of naked women and the girl he's supposed to deflower laying in the middle. And they bring him in and this one guy shows up with this smoke and has him... Take a deep inhale. As soon as he inhales it, he's out of it. He's out of it. He's got, you can tell with the effect of the screen, he's out of it. So everything he does from this point on is not his fault. It's dismissible because of the fact that he was under the influence. He's been under the, everything he's, you know, mostly everything that he's done, he's been under the influence since he started. Since he came there mostly. But he was forced to go into that tent. Because Danny even knew that something was going on. And she wanted him to come with her. Like, no, no, you have to go alone. So he's being forced to go into this tent. Then he has to inhale. And now he's absolutely being forced to have sex with this woman. And we get to see him full frontal nudity. And uh, <clears throat> don't want to talk about that. There is something I do want to mention. Because it, it's very unlikely to actually happen. Because, But... So, we get this sex scene. Without going into too much, it is the most strangest sex scene I've ever seen. Like, he, they're, like he's going on and on her and stuff, you know. And these naked women are surrounding him. And, like, she puts out her hand, and another woman comes up and grabs it. And then she starts to moan. And then every other woman inside starts to moan. Yeah. And it gets loud. And... So then, as Danny's getting out of the carriage, she hears this. And she goes to check it out, and they, one of these try to warn her, that's not for you. But she goes anyway, because she knows what's going on. And she goes, she got the look on her face the whole time. And she looks in, and she sees what's going on. And then she... She runs away, and she starts to have this cry. And then other women come up, and they start to moan and whine with her. Not moan, but whine with her. For some reason. It, it's very weird. The Christian finishes up and he runs out butt naked. Right? And he's holding his package. He's butt naked. Here's the thing. He was just having sex with a woman, right? So as soon as he pulls back. Not that I want to pay attention to a man's junk. But he's soft. I'm sorry. But if you were having sex with a woman... You'd be hard as fuck. So the fact that... He, I understand this is a movie. Okay? I'm not trying to look at another guy's dick. Okay? I'm not. But things like that, when it's shown to you on screen, you can't help but notice that and say that's bullshit. Especially when you watch porn, as I do once in a while. You will point at that and say, that's bullshit. It should be hard. And I understand... It's a film. It's not a porno film. So it's not that they had a fluffer there. But I'm just saying. It just. For some reason it didn't look right. I don't know why. Moving on. He's running around naked. And for some reason this is where they decide to show. That there are dead bodies laying around. Like he finds a foot sticking out of the ground. He goes into a barn. He finds another dead body. And then he's. Blown the dust in his face. And this dust is the reason why I think that they set up the deaths at the beginning of the film with Danny's family. Because this dust uh, allows him to be conscious. Christian is conscious, but he cannot move and he cannot speak. And the only reason this is, is because if he could move and speak, then he could tell Danny he was drugged and not in control of his own body while doing that and get out of what they wanted to happen with him. They wanted Danny to be pissed at him so that they would 
she would choose him as the last sacrifice for their little, uh, um, ceremony. That's what they wanted. Because without question, as soon as they say she could choose... She can't speak because of, she's covered in flowers too, but she, she can't speak because of what happened. She's horrified and she just looks at him and they take him away. He's not able to defend himself or tell her that he was drugged. And that's what they wanted. They have set this entire fucking thing up from the beginning because they wanted her. As soon as they got there, they were fucked. They revealed that the guy that brought them there was in on it. Of course he was. He's one of the sacrifices. As well, and they're they're willing to do it. Here's my problem with this: How many more people have they done this to? And how many more people were dragged there? How many more of the women were also dragged there with their friends and survived? How? I mean, come on. You're not telling me that there's not at least one of the survivors of an of the of another one of these things that could feel any remorse. And is not just part of this. And cannot just say, get out while you can. Please, get out. I lost my friends. Don't lose yours too. You know? Something like that. It's absolute bullshit. It ends with them setting the whole thing on fire for the thing. And yeah, Danny's one of them. When I, when I first watched this, I was severely fucked up. To the point, I was sitting there going... I, I was going to do a review right afterwards, and I'm sitting there going, how am I supposed to review this? And by, it took so long for me to figure out how I was going to say, which I didn't really, what I was going to say, which I didn't really figure that out all the way, that I only had like 15 minutes before I had to go somewhere else. So I couldn't do the review. I'm glad I waited to rewatch this, because now I can finally get out what I need to say. But yeah... I feel for Christian. I'm on his side for this whole thing. He was drugged and he was forced to do this. And he was unjustly murdered by his own girlfriend. Because they uh, drugged him again with the powder that I'm convinced is also the reason why her parents died. But, yeah. Because I think they picked her out. And said, well, she's got a family. Well, we can fix that. Either her sister was a part of the cult. Or they set it up to make it look like the sister did it. Because uh, they even say in police reports that, that the parents were paralyzed and couldn't move. That's your hint. As soon as once they do that to Christian, it's like, well, wait a minute. Could that be the same stuff that was used on his her parents? There's got to be a connection here. The whole thing was set up from the get-go. They wanted Danny... They killed off her family so that she has no more connections. They killed off all her friends. So now she has no connections. Her boyfriend is the last sacrifice as intended. He can't defend himself because he's paralyzed now. It all works. It's what they wanted. They get what they want. Now, I'm not a fan of horror movie endings or just movie endings in general to end on a bad note or end with the villain winning. Exceptions include Avengers Infinity War and possibly Hereditary. This one may be also an exception because it's just the way that it works out. That once you start putting things together in your head, because the first time I didn't catch the powder thing or the fact that they said that she, that their parents were paralyzed and when re-watching it and they say... The parents were paralyzed and couldn't move. And I'm like, wait a minute. Don't they use that stuff on her boyfriend? Doesn't the cult use the stuff on her boyfriend to paralyze him so he can't say anything? Well, this was a setup from the get-go. Like, they wanted her. And they got her. Now, going by what I was talking about earlier, about how... um. Oh, uh, what, what about the other people that were brought there against their will and were turned into this May Queen or something, right? Left over from other people, left, a person left over from before. Are they automatically a part of the group and aren't objecting to anything now that they've been subjected to this? You know, uh, 
Or were their families killed off? And how's Danny going to react after all this is done? Is she still going to want to stay after all this? Uh, is there evidence that can link these people to her family's deaths? Who knows? Probably never get an answer. But one thing I can credit Ari Aster for, it's that the endings to his movies are shocking. And they get the job done. Now, I've heard people say this isn't a full-fledged horror movie. It's more of a drama with some horror elements. And yeah, you can say that. But overall, now, overall, I can't say I enjoyed it. But here's the thing. The reason I that I wasn't too keen on watching this, it's not because I hate the movie. Far from it. I enjoy the movie. I think it's a good movie. The problem is, it's not one of those movies, along with Hereditary, they're not movies that, with high rewatchable they're not movies with a high rewatchability like say Friday the 13th movie or like say one of the Friday the 13th movies or one of the Halloween movies or even one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies they don't have that high rewatchability because of their shockingness and the way they're directed and just you know the overall spectacle of the film where you got this, the shockingness. And you, you can compare the way she acts to the way that Alex Wolf's character in Hereditary acts. Very, you know, just kind of out of it most of the time with the look on their face. But both have a similar look on their face that hers and his. Is. So it's very close. And I'm going to have to eventually review Hereditary down the road. By all means, do not watch this and Hereditary back to back. I swear to you, I've never done it, and I will never do it. Do not do it, because you're asking yourself for trouble. You go from Hereditary to this, you're going to be sitting on the couch going, for a while, after watching both films. It's, no, don't do that. Put some time between them. I probably should have reviewed Hereditary first, and on test purposes, I probably... Mm, you know, probably could have, but just uh, don't watch it back to back. And it's gonna be a while before I do Hereditary. All in all, I'm gonna give it an eight because it, you know, it doesn't have any rewatchability. It's very shocking. There's some parts I don't feel are fair to our protagonistic characters, as it's very obvious, especially on a rewatch. That from the get-go, this was all set up, and there's no way that any of the ones we want, any of the ones that they didn't want to survive, were gonna survive. So, you know, just keep, you know, on a rewatch. It's very obvious to see. But it is a good movie. I'll give it that. So that's why it gets an eight. Just. And even, I didn't mention the cinematography, just the way that Ari Aster films, films it. it. Whereas Hereditary was a very dark, light film, this one is very light. They're very contrast. Now, uh, Hereditary, I'm saying dark, as in dark. And Hereditary, and Midsummer, Midsummer as light, as in light. I'm not talking about the tone. When it comes to tones, this one is probably darker. Because from the beginning of this film, the beginning of both films, really, there's this dark undertones, this sort of depressive tones. And I think Ari Aster is good at those. If uh, Could Ari Aster make a comedy? Probably no. Because it seems that Ari Aster, Ari Aster is good at making these sort of dark, dramatic, depressing, horror-type movies that work for him. If he tried to make a comedy, I don't think it would work so well. Because he, even though this is, has a lighter, you know, a, a lighter scope, you know, cinematography-wise, it's still a very dark-toned film. And I kind of like that, where you think, oh, it's nice and bright and happy, shiny things. But, in a way, 
it's probably darker than Hereditary. So, that's what I kind of like about it. So, it gets an 8 from me. What are your thoughts on Midsummer or Midsummer, whatever you call it? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Scotty. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Wait, don't go. Don't go. I almost ended it. I gotta pick the next film. So, at least now I know it's not gonna be Midsummer. So, next film, probably for tomorrow. Uh, let's get a DVD, shall we? This is a DVD? Yeah, it is. And it's unfriended. Alright, that'll be the first review for tomorrow. I'll set this next to the DVD player, or on a DVD player, one of the two, and that'll be tomorrow's review. So, uh, yeah, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.